Welcome to the Ruth Bancroft Garden February edition of What's in Bloom. Every month we pick a selection of plants that are in bloom in that particular month and feature them on a sheet called the What's in Bloom sheet that we give to our visitors. So we're going to go through that sheet plant by plant of uh, what we have on February. And we're starting with uh, this plant here. This is a uh, emu bush. Emu bushes are in the family Scrofulariaceae, and they come from Australia. And this particular one is called Aromophila winter blaze. Winter blaze because it blooms in the wintertime and has these uh, red flowers that uh, are the source of the bl word blaze. So uh, emu bushes are, um, are quite variable in uh, terms of their flower color and their size. And this particular selection with the bright green leaves and the red flowers makes a very nice statement in the early part of the year. Aromophila winter blaze. The Protea family, Proteaceae, is especially prominent in two places, South Africa and Australia. So in South Africa, we have the Leucodendrons and the Leucosperums and the Proteas. And in Australia, the Grevilleas and the uh, Hockeyas. And uh, so the genera are different, but the family has a wide occurrence in both places. And so this is one of the South African genera, Leucodendron. So uh, a lot of plants in the Protea family have extravagant large flower heads, like a Protea, where the flower head is uh, a, a big statement. But in the case of the Leucodendrons, the flower head's actually pretty small. Uh, and there it is right at the middle here at the tip of the branch tip. Uh, so what's really colorful is not the flower head itself, but the bracts around it that take on wonderful colors. And in this case, they flush red. It blooms in the winter, so it hence the name winter red. Uh, really a spectacular plant and does really well in our Mediterranean climate. Leucodendron winter red. Fremontodendrons are known as flannel bushes. And they used to belong to the family Sterculiaceae, but now that whole family got put into the Malvaceae, the hibiscus family. So that's where it's parked now. Uh, but notable for the uh, beautiful, large yellow flowers. So uh, this one is a hybrid called California Glory, and it's a hybrid between the Mexican species, Fremontodendron mexicanum, and the California species, Fremontodendron californicum. Uh, uh, large bush with a prolific display of yellow flowers. Uh, in coastal locations, the flower display lasts longer than it does in hotter inland locations. But anyway, a beautiful plant and uh, a wonderful California native. Fremontodendron California Glory. Among the Australian members of the Protea family uh, is a large genus, Grevillea. And this is uh, a wonderful example. This is Grevillea lavandulacea panola. It's name referring to its resemblance to a lavender, although the flowers don't look anything like those of a lavender. Uh, they have a little red curly cue, which is common with Grevilleas. Uh, a nice compact shrub with uh, small fine leaves, uh, wonderful blue-green color to it that contrasts nicely with the red flowers. Grevillea lavandulacea panola. In the phlox family, Polymoniaceae, we have this wonderful shrub, Cantua volcanica, from Peru. Uh, it's a very nice plant for our garden because it doesn't need much water and its fine texture gives it a delicacy of appearance that contrasts nicely with bolder plants like the agave next to it. Plus, the purple flowers, which are abundantly produced in the wintertime, are a nice contrast with the uh, reds and oranges of some of our other winter flowers, like the aloes. So, uh, all in all, a great plant, not very well known, but deserves to be better known. Cantua volcanica. South Africa is home to an awful lot of aloe species, and no small number of those are in a taxonomically difficult group called the maculate aloes. Uh, maculate meaning spotted, and there are other aloes not in this group that also have spotted leaves, but spots go with this group. Uh, and this is one in that group called aloe brent dryensis. Whenever you see the ending ensis on a name, that means coming from. So it comes from a place called Brontdry, which is 
kind of a nothing place, but uh, nevertheless, that's where this plant was named after. And uh, the spelling, if you, if you see on the caption, uh, looks like it might be uh, misspelled with extra letters, but no, that's the way it really is spelled. And uh, so this comes from northeastern South Africa, an area that has lots of maculates. And this particular one is distinguished by having an extra lot of branches and smaller clusters of flowers than the others, and leaves with a lot of stripiness in them. Uh, it's a wonderful plant, just about to come into flower, hasn't quite opened its first flowers yet, uh, but it'll be in flower here at the garden for the next about month and a half. Aloe branchariensis. Euphorbia is an enormous genus with different species found in different parts of the world, and uh, they are so variable that you would never suppose they were all related to each other if their flowers didn't tell you that they are. Well, among the euphorbias is a wonderful group from uh, the Mediterranean, including this one, Euphorbia rigida. And uh, we really like it because it makes such a blaze of chartreuse flowers in the springtime, which go nicely with its blue-green leaves. Uh, it's, of course, a, from Mediterranean climate, like ours, and so it does very well here, and uh, makes a great display in the springtime or late winter. Euphorbia rigida. Here we have an aloe that is the result of my breeding efforts, aloe creamsicle. So this is a cross between aloe ferox and aloe arborescens, and in particular, the yellow form of aloe ferox crossed with the yellow form of arborescens, and that's because uh, this is a common cross, ferox and arborescens, that occurs both in nature and uh, in cultivation too. And, uh, Usually the color is more in the red to orange range, and I wanted to get a yellow one, so that's why I chose the yellow form of each species. But however, it didn't quite come out yellow. It came out with this soft, pale yellow-orange color that's reminiscent of the color of a creamsicle, so hence the name creamsicle. Uh, it really has grown into a spectacular clump and has all these spires of flowers this time of the year. Aloe creamsicle. Aloe microstigma has a large area of occurrence in South Africa and even one population in adjacent Namibia. And it's different at different places. So here we have a form from Graf Renette in the northwest corner of the Eastern Cape province of South Africa. And that is a relatively cold area uh, where freezes are not uncommon in the wintertime. So uh, therefore this came through unscathed in our uh, frost a couple weeks ago. And uh, we really like the bicolored inflorescence with the reddish buds giving way to uh, yellow with a green mouth as the flowers open. Uh, some forms of microstigma are all yellow, but this form has the bicolor and uh, done very well for us here at the Ruth Bancroft Garden amongst other forms of microstigma that we grow here as well. The Graf Renette form of aloe microstigma. Camelosium is a genus in the myrtle family, Myrtaceae, uh, and they come from Australia, and they are close relatives of the better known uh, genus Leptospermum. Uh, the Camelosiums are very localized in the southwestern part of Australia, and that's great for us because that's the winter rainfall part of Australia, and so these plants do very well in winter rainfall California. Uh, this one is called MB Violet, a cultivar called MB Violet for its violet colored flowers. And uh, it starts to bloom and blooms a little bit and then uh, slowly increases its bloom over a long period of time. So it's been doing this now for more than a month and still has lots of buds to go. Uh, the flowers are small but wonderful in their construction. The foliage is quite fine, doesn't cast dense shade and works well with a lot of other plants here at the Ruth Bancroft Garden. Camelosium MB Violet. Australia has many, many species in the genus Acacia, in the pea family, and this is one of them. This is uh, Acacia podolyriafolia. Uh, there are some species that come from the winter rainfall part in the western part of Australia, and some on the eastern side, and this is one of the eastern ones, but it does very well here in California. And we like the uh, small, light blue-green leaves and then the brilliant yellow flowers that come at this time of the year in uh, January and February here in California. Of course, it would be the opposite time of the year in their home in Australia. Uh, but it's a nice small tree that makes a big flower display in the wintertime. 
Acacia portillariofolia. Agave striata is a relatively common species in northeastern Mexico, but it really doesn't look like most other agaves with its very narrow needle-like leaves and its small inflorescence with green tubular flowers. Uh, but we really like that about it, that it's different from the other ones. Uh, the green flowers is an unusual color and uh, really quite nice. Uh, this plant blooms at various times of the year and uh, even here in the middle of the winter. Here it is in bloom, agave striata. Sedum is a big genus. We have some species here in California and there are some in uh, Europe and Asia and then uh, Mexico has a lot of the ones with the most succulent leaves. And that's the case with this one here. This is Sedum pachyphyllum, the name meaning thick leaf. And the leaves look sort of jelly bean like, and uh, it's a parent of the jelly bean sedum, uh, Sedum rubratinctum. Uh, but that's a redder plant. This one's more of a blue green color with just a little bit of red at the tips. Uh, the flower clusters are uh, just about to open, not quite yet, but it opens to yellow flowers when they open. Uh, this is a wonderful rock garden plant. It grows naturally in rocks like many of its relatives and does very well here at the Bancroft Garden and just coming into bloom now, Sedum pachyphyllum. A lot of our best known aloes in California come from South Africa. Uh, but this one is definitely not a widely grown plant and it comes from clear at the other end of the distribution of aloe on the Arabian Peninsula. This is aloe <coughs> rivierii from Yemen. Uh, very narrow, steeple-like racemes of flowers, starting out coral red and then getting somewhat paler as they open. Uh, it forms a cluster of stems that don't get all that tall, but it makes a bunch of them in time, aloe rivieria. South Africa has many aloes from the western part of the country where the rain falls in the winter, as well as the eastern part of the country where the rain falls in the summer. This one here is aloe pluridens, and it's one of the summer rainfall aloes. It comes from Eastern Cape province. And uh, it is very happy to be here in this covered bed because the flowers probably would have gotten damaged had it been growing outdoors in the open when we had our cold spell on January 2nd. It got down to 26 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, several degrees below freezing, and uh, that would have been enough probably to damage the flowers. But here in the protected bed, it's looking just beautiful with the uh, flowers opening up one raceme after another and really putting on quite a show. Aloe pluridens. This aloe is aloe van Balenii. It comes from the eastern side of South Africa in the province of KwaZulu-Natal. And in nature, it grows in a place where the rain falls all in the summer and it's completely dry in the winter. And during the winter dry season, when the flowers come out, the plant turns all red. Well, here it doesn't do that because we don't have dry enough conditions in the wintertime, but it is still flowering incredibly well. There is just flowers coming out all over the place. The flower color in the species uh, is variable. It could be a, a pink color or a yellow color or a uh, more of a orangey yellow. And ours is sort of a butterscotch yellow. It's just about to open, but not quite there yet. But lots of flowers on the way. Aloe van Balenii. Kalenkoe is a genus in the Crassula family or the stonecrop family. And there are some that occur in Africa, but many more in Madagascar. And that's true of this one here. This is Kalenkoe marnieriana, and uh, one of the many species from Madagascar. And it has oval leaves, a little bit of a red at the margin, and then these wonderful tubular coral colored flowers that are on display right now. Kalenkoe marnieriana. A lot of hybridizers with aloes who have worked with miniature aloes have concentrated on Madagascar species. But in my own hybridizing, I've uh, used the South African miniature ones. And this is an example. This is a, a cross between aloe humulus and aloe pictifolia. So uh, it really looks more like aloe humulus than aloe pictifolia, but the leaf texture isn't quite as rough as that of aloe humulus. I really like the way that it makes lots and lots of heads and then lots and lots of flower stalks when it comes into bloom. And here it is in full bloom now, aloe humulus ex pictifolia. Bulbine is a genus in the asphodel family, the same family with the aloes. And actually this plant looks rather aloe-like, except that the 
leaf edges are completely smooth, uh, not toothed as you would normally see with an aloe. Also, the flowers, instead of being tubular like an aloe flower, open widely and are almost always yellow in the, in the uh, ball beans. Uh, this one is a very robust plant, a big rosette with very fleshy leaves and many spires of yellow flowers, uh, looking really good right now. Bulbine latifolia. Aloe arborescens is a large shrubby species that occurs over a wide swath of South Africa and then northward into Zimbabwe next door as well. Uh, it's been in California for a long time, well over a hundred years, and you see large plantings of it in places like Golden Gate Park. So here it is in full bloom at the Ruth Bancroft Garden with these uh, spires of red-orange flowers. There are also yellow flowered forms of it, and our yellow flowered forms are already done, so the red blooms a little bit later. Uh, but really a statement plant in a garden if you have room enough for it. Aloe arborescens. Glottophyllum is a genus in the ice plant family from South Africa, and it occurs both in the Eastern Cape Province and in the Western Cape Province. And this particular one here is a hybrid from right here at the Ruth Bancroft Garden, and it's a cross between Glottophyllum cruciatum and Glottophyllum longum. The red tips come from cruciatum. And uh, these Glottophyllums have uh, soft, flexible leaves, uh, not rigid, and uh, they are uh, a little bit difficult to grow if you have too much uh, extended wet, because they can rot. Uh, but here we have it growing in a rock pile where it's got really good drainage and it's really doing quite well. Uh, the yellow flowers are typical of the whole genus Glottophyllum, not just this particular species. And uh, others bloom at other times of the year, but this one blooms in midwinter and has just been in bloom for the last couple of weeks. Glottophyllum cruciatum ex longum. That brings us to the close of our February edition of What's in Bloom at the Ruth Bancroft Garden. Uh, th this is a nice selection of plants that we've seen, but remember that there's many other plants at the garden that bloom for shorter periods of time that don't make it onto What's in Bloom. And coming here to the garden, you get to see lots of things for yourself that might not be on here. Uh, we also encourage you to visit our website whenever you're able to, www.ruthbancroftgarden.org, and see all the wonderful things on our website.